right here. Not on the field. But where we want to be at the end of the season starts with our mentality and our attention to detail today. When they leave Penn State, a person should be able to look at them and say, that's a guy that went through that program who's special. Welcome into episode two on season three of the Unrivaled Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Gerber. Excited to be joined today by second year offensive line coach and national champion as a collegiate player, Phil Tretwak. Coach, as we sit outside on the porch of the last football complex on this beautiful day, you and I were just having a conversation about one of your favorite public speakers that came to Penn State football and delivered some powerful messages. That is Inky Johnson. When was the first time that you heard Inky's message? Uh, just Twitter, internet, and um, believe it or not, you know, I was talking to you a little bit earlier, is that he, uh, we actually went to college. I actually was the same class as him in 04. Um, I actually went on a visit to Tennessee, didn't know him or meet him, but then in 2006, you know, he was a really good safety in the SEC. So, um, you know, I knew of him, and, and we played him a couple weeks after, you know, the tragedy that he had, and um, he was a heck of a football player. So, um, you know, I wish I got to play against him, but I could tell that, you know, he was, you know, he was a great player. As you alluded to, we were having a previous conversation, and you got to block against some of those guys. What were some of those names? Yeah, Robert Ayers. Uh, he was pretty good. He was yeah, the, not I, bad. Yeah, 18th pick overall, I think, to the um, Denver Broncos. And then Mayo, um, linebacker, uh, played for the Patriots for a long time, and they had a bunch of guys. Uh, the safety, um, oh, man, I forget his name. The Barry, he hit me really, really hard. Um, run play, so you know he had uh, you know a lot of good players around him, which is great to hear that they were also great people and great teammates of his and helped him through, um, you know, his adversity and, and what he went through. So that's really cool to hear that not also were their guys, those guys great football players, but they were great teammates. So that's awesome. Let's hear one of the most powerful messages that Inky delivered to the Penn State football program when he spoke to the team. You would hear people say oftentimes, you got to work hard, right? Like I, I just worked with a nine-year-old baseball team and parents would come on the gate and say, the boys got to work hard. And I asked one of the dads, I said, well, what does that mean? He said, they got to show up and they got to push themselves. They got to work hard. I said, but what does it mean? Why is it important to them? Like, why do you work hard every single day? Like, why does a cat have to see the importance of not giving up in a wind sprint? Why does a cat have to see the importance of not giving up in an agility drill? Why does a cat have to see the importance of the six second mentality? Right? Why does a cat have to see the importance of being present every single down, every single play, every single day. Why does the cat have to see the importance of not just pressing to be a great football player, but pushing himself to be great in every aspect of life and everything he touches and everything he's connected to? Why does the cat have to strive to see the importance of perspective, right? How we view what we do affects how we do what we do. That's a loaded one right there. How we view what we do is how we do what we do. What do you take away from that? I mean, it's, it's, hard work it's it's hard you know not everyone's going to do it not everyone will go out and do everything uh physically possible on every rep or everything they do to try to be great um you know not everyone wants to do it and he's just basically saying why does it take you not doing it or why does it take you seeing it somebody else or not having that opportunity or you know why don't you just go out every day and give everything you got to everything you do um that's what i got from it and I wrote it down, and it was, it was unbelievable. We've seen pretty much every single video that Inky Johnson has to offer on YouTube, but when you actually see him in person, he comes down those stairs, he's got a little intro video that he plays, and then it's like, ooh, this hits a little bit different, right? Yeah, I mean, totally different than watching it, watching it on Twitter and seeing it live and, you know, it, you know Coach Franklin, you know, getting him here and, and having that opportunity that, Having King Johnson come and talk to us, I'll, I'll never forget it uh, for the rest of my life. And it's, you know, I just, I texted Coach Franklin and said, thank you, because he didn't have to do that. Um, you know, and that's what kind of person Coach Franklin is. And, you know, being able to, you know, do that for us is, you know, that's who he is. So it was awesome. It was so cool to see everybody's faces last night in the room afterwards, too. It was like everybody was a little kid again, and there were multiple players saying, why didn't you, Coach, why didn't you have him speak to us the first team meeting today? We would have went out there and laid some hits down. 
Inky also in that clip mentioned the six second mentality. What is that? So that's the average play is six seconds. And I say that to my, the, my off, the offensive line all the time because you have to just go hard for six seconds. Like if someone said right now, run as fast as you can for six seconds, like as fast as you physically can, right? And you had to do it, you probably do it. And then now you have to forget about that six seconds. Now worry about the next six seconds. And then, then go as hard as you can for six seconds. Forget about the last six seconds and then go. And that's what football is, you know? And it's, it's having that mentality. And, um, you know, if you have a team that does that, you know, that's, that's the no talent things. You'll, you'll pretty much, you know, you know you'll be more successful, um, you know, having that mentality. Six second mentality. All right, let's go to clip number two. Like I share a story about a team all the time. Like I was in Florida, a team, I'm talking to them, and it wasn't Florida University, but I'm in Florida talking to a team, and cats just talking to me about how great they're going to be, how they're going to dominate some cats, right? And I stood outside the room, and I watched every single one of them step over a Gatorade bottle. Every single one of them. Yeah, ain't going to do this. I'm going to be a beast. And I stood up. I'm like, man, I thought y'all said y'all want to be great. We are great. Oh, you can't pick up the Gatorade bottle. Why are the small details so important? Because to be great, um, you know, what I got it from it and what I believe in is to be great, you have to be great in everything you do. Um, you know, and so what he's saying is it's the little things too. You can't just say I'm going to be great Saturday versus Wisconsin. You have to go out every single practice and be great at every individual period. Be great at every single, um, you know, every single uh, team period, you know, every single rep. But also, when you leave here, are you doing the, the things to be great? Are you going to class? Are you going to study hall? Are you eating? Are you nutrition? You know, how, is all that aligned to be great? And that's what he's saying. Like, you can't just say that and then you want to be great, but then you leave a Gatorade bottle or you don't, you don't eat dinner. You know, you don't do those fine little details. They all add up. And so being, being that guy, you know, being that, that guy that everything matters, it's, it's hard. And that's what great players do, great people do. You being a former Division One football player yourself at the University of Florida, you've played at a high level, and now you're coaching at a high level here at Penn State University. How have you taken those little, that little detail approach from a player standpoint to the coaching standpoint? Because, see, that's, that's me because that's the habits that I've built when I was a player, like I wasn't the most talented. Like I tell my guys all the time, every single one of these offensive linemen here in this room are more talented than me, but all of them would have been my backup. Like that's the mentality I have because I would have made sure that I was consistent. I knew exactly what to do on every play. I knew my footwork. My footwork would have been perfect because the details of that, not everyone wants to do. And that's why guys that were behind me, you know, might've got drafted when I left higher than me, but I beat them out because I was going to be consistent. I was going to make sure that I had, I never cramped at Florida, never cramped. I might've lost 14 pounds at practice, but I gained my weight back like those, but that's when I was able to push harder and longer than they would. So I would have been able to sustain it because of my mindset. So as a coach, I do the same thing. I'm writing notes for my guys. I'm right. I'm drawing pictures. I might be here and a lot of coaches make fun of me and say, you're here too long, but that's my mindset. That's what I'm going to have to do. And I got a great wife and family um, that understand that. My wife understands how hard I work and how much um, she knew what she was getting into because of how I was as a player. And so it's easy for us. So it's not like all of a sudden I'm changing the way I am. Um, I am who I am and I'm going to keep growing, keep getting better. Um, so that's the mindset I have you know, as a coach, and that's probably why I'm here. And that's what I tell these guys, because I want these guys, like I, I say, at the end of the day, I want them to be successful. Like I want them to be the best players they can be. And to do that, they have to attack every moment, everything, and they have to make sure that they give everything they got to everything. So That Florida heat's no joke either to not be able to cramp. It's uh, hot down there in the summer. Now, how do you motivate as a coach? Um, I just motivate by just – kind of I mean I get them going I, I try to show them you know the opportunities that we have I'm a big countdown guy you know show them that you know they only got a certain amount of days to make sure that they're playing at their very best um, you know I'm not a big yeller and screamer I'm more of like you know what did you do wrong why did you think that way so I can kind of understand where they're at and why they made that mistake 
Um, so, you know, the way I motivate them, you know, usually is just by you know, telling them experiences and get them going. And, and I actually use a bunch of Inky Johnson quotes and, and use his videos because, you know, those, those moments, you know, sometimes they need that. I think sometimes cats be scared to push themselves to see what they made out of. Right? Like alone, you can only get so far. It's like Caesar and Planet of the Apes. When my man was standing up on the hill and they were going bananas, right? He looking out at his crew and they just terrorizing stuff. And what he was telling them was, alone, we weak. Alone, strength of the pack is the wolf. Strength of the wolf is the pack. Alone, you only as strong as your weakest link, bro. Together, strong. Together, change the world. Together, impact. Together, we are in everything we do. Together. It's a lifestyle. You're smiling. Why? That's what team is. That's what football does. That's what, you know, that's what the sport, that's what sports bring and that team, you know, it's not always about the individual. You have to, you have to be together um, because you're only strong as your weakest link. And so if, you know, if we're not all together, if we're not all on the same page, if we all don't have the same core values, if we all don't have the same uh, mindset, if we all don't want to go out every day to be great, um, then, you know, it's, it's not going to it's not going to happen. And so he's just basically saying, you know, together we can we are we, we, we could be as great as we want to be. Inky Johnson visiting with the Penn State football program on Thursday, August 19th as the 2021 season is right around the corner. And with that, the offensive line, it's a highly looked at group, right? What have your biggest takeaways been thus far through camp? Um, just the way we're starting to mesh together. Um, just the guys, their effort, um, their ability to come out every day and just work hard and grind and I think they're really starting to understand that details and fundamentals are really true to how great we can be. Um, because the no talent, the talent, we, we have it, right? But it's going to be the no talent things. Um, and they're, they're believing in it. And it's great to see. And, you know, the questions they asked me, the, the meetings that we have are just awesome. Like, I, we, we'll have a meeting and two hours from now and I can't wait because you know something might come up where they ask me and we talk about football um, they take coaching they want to be better they want to be great um, and so having that room and having that culture in the room it's awesome because it, it wasn't always that way and it's I always I have been in rooms that it wasn't that way and every every day it's miserable or it's you know guys don't really pay attention they don't take notes but here it's it, the culture is you know they're buying in and so I definitely got that during this training camp. Now, you being a relatively new coach still on this staff, you had to come in and shape that culture from what's already been laid here at Penn State University. What difference or differentiating factor do you feel that you now have the culture you want in the offensive line room? Um, it's just building good habits. Um, you know, I think they're, they're starting to see. And what's great is, you know, you got um, guys like Minute and Fries that are it at the next level and they're calling our guys saying coach Trout's telling you the right things we're we're getting a playbook and we have to learn it in, in a week and the habits that we've done the, the way that we take notes um, you know it's it's paying off and so them seeing it and then believing it and having other guys that are now at, in the NFL being able to call them and say hey you know what you guys are doing there is right you know it, it helps so know, building those habits to everyday focus, every day be locked in, um, making sure that they write down a note that might be for them so they don't make a mistake twice. Um, so that's, that's something that I kind of brought to them. Let's end on this. So you have the foundation laid. You have the habits that are starting to form within your position room. What question do you still feel needs to be answered before that first game from an offensive line standpoint? Oh, that's a good one. Um, Really, how many guys can I play in Wisconsin? You know, how many guys? Because um, I want to play as many guys that I feel are ready. Um, not only just for the guys that I feel like are ready, but also for the development of the offensive line. Like, I, I don't want to just play five guys this year. I want to try to play 10, 11, 12, because that then next year, right, I don't want to look ahead, but then I, I have a, a foundation so that some guys are playing the first time next year. Um, 
So being able to do that and having guys that are I feel are ready is probably the big question. More and more um, guys as possible. Coach, appreciate your time. Thanks for the insight on Inky Johnson. I know that you're, uh, you're a huge fan of Inky and appreciate your insight to the season. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.